human being in every sales conversation that has the most control over their emotions has the greatest probability of getting the outcome that they desire. So when you're sitting down having a conversation with someone, no matter where you are, it's your emotional control that gives you the ability to get past anything that happens and, and, and to be able to influence the emotions of the other people. Welcome along to the ABC Financial Intensive Series. I'm your host, Chantal Broderick. Our intensive shows are designed specifically to be like a short course, where you'll learn practical information throughout the episode. Our expert guest for this show is the president and CEO of Sales Gravy Incorporated, Jeb Blunt. And during today's show, Jeb will be sharing his expertise on how to handle sales objections, specifically how to become rejection proof. I'll tell you a little bit more about the show in just a minute, but first let me properly introduce our special guest. Jeb Blunt is a sales acceleration specialist, and he's the author of 10 books, including Fanatical Prospecting, Sales EQ, People Buy You, People Follow You, and the book that we're chatting about today, Objections. He is among the world's most respected thought leaders on prospecting, sales, leadership, and customer experience. And through his global training organization, Sales Gravy, Jeb advises the world's leading organizations and their executives on the impact of emotional intelligence and interpersonal skills on customer-facing activities. Now, long-term listeners of the show may remember Jeb joined us on episodes 51 and 52 to talk about the five most important questions in sales. He then joined us again on episode 105, where we chatted about how to become an ultra-high performer in your fitness business. If you missed any of those shows, all you need to do is head to today's show notes at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and I've added a link to today's show notes page. So let's talk about what's coming up in today's show. We chat about why so many people fear facing an objection from a prospect. Jeb shares the seven disruptive emotions which impede our ability to get past no. We chat about three ways to start to become rejection proof. And to finish off, Jeb tells us that the answer yes does in fact have a number. So needless to say, for all of the FBP family out there that sell as part of your role, and to be fair, probably most of us do at some stage, well, Jeb tells us what that number is and the science behind it. If you're new to our intensive shows, here are two very quick tips for you. Number one, Grab something that you can write notes on, pen, paper, phone, laptop, whatever tickles your fancy, just get organized ahead of time. And number two, once you've listened to the full show, then go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and download a copy of the ebook of today's show. That means you can then work your way through the information on there and print off the ebook and you can use it as a training resource with your team. Plus, as always, I have included a link in the show notes so you can go ahead and buy a copy of Jeb's latest book, Objections, the ultimate guide for mastering the art and science of getting past no. You know what to do. Go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and you will find the link right there. Okay, we are about to get started, but first I want to say a big thank you to our podcast partner, ABC Financial. To learn why top health and fitness facilities use ABC Financial to simplify their gym management and to increase profitability, head to www.abcfinancial.com. Enjoy this week's interview with my special guest, Jeb Blunt. Jeb, a very warm welcome and thank you so much for joining us on the show once again. Thank you. Now, a huge congratulations because you have recently launched your latest book, Objections, the Art and Science of Getting Past No. So to get started with today, Jeb, tell us why is it that so many people fear facing an objection from a prospect? Well, this is, I think, the, the, the crux of dealing with objections is that for so long, what we've done is we've taught the, we've are, are considered or are managed the fear of rejection as, as if it's some psychological problem that people have. And, and, and in fact, it is not. It's way more biological than it's psychological. And it really stems from when the modern hum, human brain was formed 
human beings lived in small groups of people. We counted on each other. We lived in caves and huts and teepees. And, uh, and if you got sideways with your group, in other words, if you got rejected or, 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 or displaced or, or, you know, sent out of the group, then the chances are that you wouldn't survive. So human beings evolved a natural, I guess, sensitivity to being rejected uh, or being ostracized. And, and in that process, the people that had that sensitivity to rejection knew where the lines are drawn with the other people around them. So they were able to get along with those people better. And people who had a higher sensitivity to being rejected were more likely to pass on their DNA. So over the course of time, this evolved into our fear of rejection as human beings. And the way, by the way, our brain treats rejection is different than it treats other emotions and that it hardwires the, the feeling of rejection into uh, our brains and into our, our, our physical being. And the, the way that you can, you can understand this, I guess, better than, than, than me just saying it is just think about a time that you were rejected and that you were rejected badly. And if you go back and really think about that, you can almost experience it as if it just happened. And you can't do that with any other emotion. And this, by the way, is why for salespeople in particular, but this is also true for entrepreneurs and business owners, that when you get rejected, you, sh- you have a tendency to shut down. Or when you get an objection, you have a tendency to shut down. And then you begin to avoid that objection or avoid that rejection. And, and this makes you obviously a worse salesperson because people are going to tell you, no, they're going to say, maybe they're going to say, you know, can you lower your price? I mean, they're going to do those things to you, but your body remembers this rejection. So you have a tendency to avoid it. So, so you have to get, you know, past that, that, that natural, it's in its natural fear of rejection and learn how to control that, learn how to rise above it. And by the way, you know, telling people to let it roll off your back is completely um, disingenuous because rejection doesn't roll off your back. It, it's personal and it feels that way. So it's really about learning how to feel the fear and rise above it and control your response to it. So you can't, you can't, uh, control your emotions. Your emotions happen without your consent. The way you feel about being ostracized or, or being rejected uh, or getting an objection that happens without your consent. So what you have to do is learn how to feel the emotion, let it happen, but rise above it so that you can choose whatever response that you want in that particular moment. Kev, I'd love to dive into this in a little bit more detail because in chapter eight of objections, you speak about becoming rejection proof. And in that chapter, you actually explore seven disruptive emotions, as you were just mentioning, which impede our ability to get past no. Do you think today you'd be able to step us through what those seven emotions are? Absolutely. So so these are the the disruptive emotions that impact salespeople everywhere. So let's go back to what I said earlier. The, The human being in every sales conversation that has the most control over their emotions has the greatest probability of getting the outcome that they desire. So when you're sitting down, having a conversation with someone, no matter where you are, it's your emotional control that gives you the ability to get past anything that happens and, and, and to be able to influence the emotions of the other people. But for salespeople, there are these disruptive emotions that, um, that both impede our ability to get past no and impede our ability to influence the emotions of other people. Uh, the number one is fear. So we just talked about the fear of rejection where fear, uh, we have a fear of being rejected, fear of not being liked, a, a fear of being uh, pushed away or pushed out, a fear of not being appreciated. So fear is a really, really big deal. And when you're, when you have fear, like it's rolling through your veins, it clouds your objectivity. Uh, it, uh, it creates insecurity. Uh, and it's really, really difficult for you uh, to, to be confident in the moment. And confidence is a big deal when you're getting past objections. But there's also desperation. And for me, this is the, the, the mother of all the disruptive emotions. So if we go back to fanatical prospecting, the easiest way to get past desperation and, in fact, overcome fear and control your emotions is you have a full pipeline, is that you've sold a whole lot, that you can sell like you, do, you don't care whether you get the deal or not, whether you, you, you close the client or not, it doesn't matter. So, so desperation is a big deal. We're mostly desperate when we're not selling things. So desperation 
this is where where insecurity comes from and insecurity this is the killer because insecurity drowns your confidence it takes away your assertiveness it makes you feel small and weak it changes your language patterns so that you begin to use these weak passive language patterns that in fact breed more rejection so when you are insecure you actually create rejection where it didn't exist originally because people have a tendency to run over you Another really big disruptive emotion uh, for human beings is our insatiable need for significance. Now, this is the most insatiable human emotional need. We, we all have the need to, to feel that we matter, that we're appreciated, uh, that people care about us. And this need for significance is the singularity of almost all human behavior, the good things we do and the bad things we do, the, the, the need to feel important. And for salespeople, the need for significance can make you combative. It can cause you great, you know, great uh, hurt if someone says, well, I don't want to do business with you or I don't want to buy from you or I don't like the presentation that you gave. And it can also put you in a situation where you begin to compete with your buyer for, for attention. So you over talk things. And in some cases, because you over talk things because you grandstand, because you want to feel important, you want to feel like you're, you know, you're an expert uh, and that you matter, you, you end up creating objections because uh, they don't really like you very much because when you're talking at them, they don't, they don't like you. They don't feel important. So learning how to manage that, that need for significance is very, very big. Now, along with needs, need for significance is attachment. Attachment is when we, we're attached to winning uh, and, or we're attached to being right. Uh, and and the 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 problem with attachment uh, is that attachment breeds delusion, and because it 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 completely clouds your objectivity of where you are. So you become attached to being right. You become attached to your way of doing things. You become attached to your proposal. You become attached to the fact that you think you know what's better for your your prospect. You become attached to winning. You become attached to your own significance. This clouds everything and you become delusional. And if you're delusional, you can't be successful. Along with attachment comes eagerness. And eagerness is almost the opposite of attachment. But this happens a lot for especially young or new salespeople to become so eager to please the other person that they give away things. They give away their negotiating power. Um, they come off as weak. And this, again, can breed uh, objections, but it also can create insecurity. And then finally, the one that holds us all back is worry. And worry generates procrastination. Uh, worry can kick off the fight or flight response before you've ever actually been an objected or gotten, gotten a rejection or an objection. And worry is what we call the anticipation of being rejected. So when you worry about things and worry about what worry about things, a lot of times what you'll do is you'll begin to avoid the potential for a rejection or an objection altogether. And at the same time, sometimes you begin to change the way that you approach your client. It, you, you change your confidence level. You change your assertiveness, assertiveness level. Uh, you change all of that because you're worried about what might happen rather than, than actually being in the moment and letting it happen. And those are the seven disruptive emotions that have the greatest impact on sales behavior. Jeb, thank you for talking us through those. So now that we have a more thorough understanding of those disruptive emotions, let's now talk about solutions. What are three ways that we can start to become rejection proof? Well, number one is self-awareness. So the things that we, we talk about is, you know, here is, let me explain why this is happening. And the reason that I, I explained the science behind why rejection hurts so bad is because when you become aware of it, um, you know what's happening. I, I've been in sales for 30 years. I still feel the fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. And I've been rejected so many times. I've made so many outbound phone calls. I sell every single day of my life with my team. I still feel it, but I'm aware of why it happens. I'm aware of where it comes from. And self-awareness is the mother of change. So it begins with understanding how you feel right before you get rejected. How do you change your language patterns, the way that you talk, the words that you use? How do you change your body language? How do you stand? How do you look? It can even help to like, do a presentation and have someone get you, capture you on video and watch yourself and watch how you come off as insecure or passive or weak because you're afraid to, to ask. I even put uh, salespeople through a lot of role plays where that we put them in a situation where they get to the end of their presentation or the end of their facility tour, and they have to ask the, 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 the prospect straight up, 
to, to do business with them. And that we say there's a hundred percent probability they're going to say yes. You've, there's no chance you're going to get an objection, and and you'll watch the salespeople hesitate. And then when we when we put it on video and they see themselves, all of a sudden it clicks. Like why did I do that? I mean there was no reason for me to hesitate or to change the way that I was asking or to change my tone of voice. I should have been relaxed, assertive, and confident in that moment because there was no chance that I was going to get rejected. So we begin there with understanding who you are and why this is happening so that you can then rise above it. Mm -hmm. I also believe in positive visualization. I think that um, that along with managing your self-talk are really big deals. So in other words, instead of worrying about what might happen, look at the situation and walk yourself through it mentally, which is what athletes do, right? They, 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 they walk themselves through the process of what's going to happen and they visualize on the other end, something good happening to them. This has a tendency to bolster your confidence, which is, which is an important piece of this, uh, of, of this puzzle in terms of getting people to say yes to you. Uh, and, um, and, and it, 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 it it changes the way things work when you actually do it because you've run through it enough time. And at the same time, managing your self-talk is key because part of positive visualization is keeping that little voice inside of you that is talking at you all the time and saying, well, you know, um, you're going to fail here. This person's going to say this, or you're not good enough, or, um, you know, uh, don't be too pushy. So when you, when you can use visualization to see yourself in the moment, achieving your goal, getting the yes, at the same time, you can use that to manage your, um, your, your self-talk. I also think it's critically important. And these two, these three things really go together is that you're managing your outward physiology. So whether that, by the way, that physiology could be on the phone, so you're having a conversation with someone, so being confident, uh, using an assertive tone of voice, but at the same time, managing your physiology. So let's just say that you are in a fitness center and you are walking someone through the center, you're taking them on your typical tour, you know, asking them questions, finding out what's important to them, learning about where they may have failed in the past, watch what you're doing. Are your hands in your pocket or, you know, are your shoulders slumped or do you always make eye contact? What are you doing to consistently demonstrate your confidence, your assertiveness in the moment uh, so that they feel that confidence as well? And then finally, for I think that the, the greatest thing that you can do, and this has been proven out over and over again, is that you have to develop obstacle immunity. And what that means is that rejection is a very difficult, hard hill to climb. And, um, and it's no different than the mutter races and the Spartan races are the way people train for, you know, really difficult events like climbing in a mountain. Um, you have to face this obstacle of objection and rejection enough times so that what seems like an insurmountable uh, task or, 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 you know, or wall to get past becomes easier and easier and easier for you. So uh, looping back, I've, I've been in sales my entire life. I sell every single day. I still feel the fear of rejection. What I've learned how to do is face that fear, rise above it because I've faced it so many times before. So when I'm in that situation and I feel the emotion, I've, I'm able to deploy the frameworks that I know work in that, in that situation to give myself the highest probability of getting the outcome that I, that I, that I'm looking for, which is to get the client to say yes to me. And by facing the fear over and over and over and over again, that obstacle begins to look pretty small. Jeb, there was one point there that you just talked about, which I thought was such a good segue to my next question, because you were talking about physiology and how important it is that we we think about the way that we walk and we talk and we present ourselves as we're walking through the gym, for example. And in your book, Objections, there was one particular area that you talked about, which I thought was so relevant to fitness professionals, because you talked about staying fit, which I wasn't expecting to come up um, as part of a, a sales book or, a, you know, dealing with objections book. So where exactly does staying fit have to do with being rejection proof? Well, if you th- just think about the emotion of rejection or d- dealing with an objection. And let's, let's, let's just take a step back. An objection, somebody giving you an objection in a sales call is not real rejection. It is perceived rejection. 
It is not real. Someone saying I'm not interested or I need to go talk about it or I'll be back later. I need to have a conversation with my spouse or I want to look at a couple other gyms. I mean, that's not they're not rejecting you. But it doesn't make the difference that if I that I say that it still feels like you're being rejected, even though it's not rejection. So if we if we just have to begin at that at that point. So the emotional toll on you of having someone make you feel like you're being rejected by saying I'm not interested or what have you uh, is intense. And we know that emotional control stems from your, your, you know, your physical well-being. So if you haven't had enough to sleep uh, or enough sleep, it's very difficult to manage your emotions in the moment. It's very difficult to, you know, overcome your, your fear or your insecurity when you're tired and you're having a hard time thinking. No, no, no different than if you stayed out, 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 you know, out all night long drinking and you're totally, you know, worn out. It's very difficult to manage your emotions in those situations. Likewise, if you're hungry, it's, it's difficult to manage your emotions and manage your willpower. And if you are, you know, if you aren't physically fit, like if you don't feel good, Physically, it's very difficult to, to garner the confidence that you need in order to sell. And I can't think of a place where, you know, selling, you know, gym memberships are, uh, there's no place that you need to be more fit than that. I mean, you need to look better than anybody else that you're, you know, in the gym. They need to look at you and say, you know, that's the person that I want to be. But by, by working out and staying fit, it gives you confidence. And the most powerful position for you as a salesperson is that of relaxed assertive confidence because emotions transfer. So everything we're talking about, all these things that we're saying, Chantal, are all about the things that you do to make sure in the moment when you're asking for what you want, you are confident and you're transferring that confidence to the other person. So when you're having a conversation with someone who is coming to your gym because they need to do um, or you know, make a major life change. They need to, they need to um, fit in, you know, fit in a wedding dress or a suit, or you know, their doctor just told them that they're, you know, if they don't start working out, something bad going to happen to them, or you know, whatever their situation, their life situation is. They feel insecure when they're coming to you. They feel insecure when they're walking around in your, you know, in your facility. And that's going to create a situation where they may give you an objection, especially the be back objection. I'll be back, um, which you people don't they don't they don't come back. So they give you those those objections. You have to have the confidence in both your facility and yourself and, and your ability to help them and transfer that to them so that when they give you that objection, you can confidently get them past that, put your arm around their shoulder and, and pull them in and help them do the right thing for themselves. So I believe that um, getting enough sleep, getting, eating the right food and, um, and staying, you know, staying physically fit are critical to emotional control and in every sales conversation, it's the human being that exerts the most, most uh, emotional control that has the highest probability of getting the outcome that they desire. You know, Jeb, I think in our industry, we put so much emphasis on that message that you just gave us. We put so much emphasis on it for our clients and for our members and for our, our personal training customers. But I love this idea of really reflecting it back on ourselves and saying, okay, well, how does it make you feel when you've had a good night's sleep? Or how does it make you feel when you are standing up tall and dressed confidently? And, you know, how does that actually change the way that you talk to someone and feel in that environment? So thank you for, for giving us the opportunity to kind of reflect that back on ourselves. Now, we finish off each of our shows with Fit Inspiration and in your book, you actually say that yes has a number. So I would love to know what is that number and can you briefly explain the science around it? Yeah, so uh, I, I opened that chapter up with uh, a story about going to New York City. I went to New York City with my camera guy and we had to sneak around because you had to have a permit to film. So we had to, we kept, we had to keep running from the police. We could, you know, get, hop into a small corner. But what we would do is we would, uh, we would walk up to people and I had a microphone and I had the camera pointing at them and I would ask them to sing Mary Had a Little Lamb. And you're in New York City. So New York City is a tough place. I got a, a few FUs, you know, so people were, you know, not friendly about that. But we asked and asked and asked. And, and what happens, we, we figured out that it took about 11 asks to get one person to sing the song for us. And we, we experimented, experimented, experimented. And that was, a, that was our yes number. So 
it's it's imperative for you as a salesperson to understand what your yes number is and 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 so and basically to create a baseline so how many how many tours do you do to get someone to sign up how many outbound phone calls do you make how many emails do you make how many you know whatever do you do in your conversion funnel all the way through how many phone calls do you take if if you're if you are a, you know a gym owner like um, so how you know from an advertising standpoint how many uh, you know how much advertising do you do to create how many phone calls to converts how many people to walk through the front door that then those people turn into into memberships all the way through the conversion funnel. So the whole point of yes has a number is that uh, is that you're not going to win every every conversation. You're not going to win every deal. You're not going to win every client. You're not going to win every single time. But yes has a number. If you didn't do anything but just ask people, someone would say yes to you. And the goal here is not just to go out and you know spray and pray. It is to understand what the yes number is through the conversion funnel. And then understanding and knowing that, be able to bend the yes number in your favor. So what can you change? So for example, you just said, wait, how do I dress when I'm in the gym? How do I look? How do, how, you know, how do I act? What questions do I ask? How, when I get faced with an objection, do I deploy? And we teach a five-step framework for the buying commitment objection. Do I deploy that framework and I'm able to do it confidently? Do I understand how to, uh, under, you know, how to turn around or minimize, you know, someone's fear or concerns at the end when I'm asking them to make a commitment? Do I, what am I doing differently and what can I do differently in order to change my yes number through the conversion funnel? So begin A, with understanding what your numbers are, know your numbers, know your statistics, track everything relentlessly. And then take a look at the micro levers inside or the micro conversions inside the, your, your, major, your, your bigger conversion funnel and then start making decisions inside the conversion funnel around what you need to change in order to bend or change your yes number. But yes has a number uh, and it has a number for everyone. And, um, and all you've got to do is understand it change your behavior, deploy some of the tactics we teach in the book, and I can guarantee you that your yes number will improve. I want to thank you so much for taking the time. It is amazing that you would give us your time once again, and we're really excited to share this information with all of the FBP family. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Chantal. You're awesome. Another huge thank you to Jeb. And as mentioned earlier, I have included links to the Sales Gravy website in today's show notes. So you can go ahead and purchase one of Jeb's books and you can reach out to Jeb to chat further. There is someone else that I want to say thank you to, and that is our intensive show partner, ABC Financial. And I had a chance to catch up with their senior vice president of partner relations, Kelly Card, to chat about some of the latest news and updates from ABC Financial. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome along today's guest, Kelly. Welcome and thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And thank you for your continued partnership and all of the great messaging that you constantly drive into the fitness industry with the Fitness Business Podcast. You guys are awesome. What an amazing way to start our conversation. Well, I want to say a big thank you right back at you because we are so excited to have ABC Financial as our exclusive partner for the intensive shows once again in 2019. So Kelly, thank you so much to yourself and to all of the team from ABC Financial. Uh, we're, just, we're just excited to, to have a great partnership with you. Now, I wanted to get you on today because it's been a little while since we've had an update. So can you share with us any news or any updates that are happening with ABC Financial? Oh, well, certainly, certainly many, many exciting things. You know, this time of year, we are truly hip to hip with our customers plowing through the busy season, but there are many exciting things that are happening. First of all, we are thrilled to introduce our recent acquisition of W12. They have an international club management platform, Evo, out of Brazil that's really going to help our customers scale beyond the walls of North and Central America and give us a, a strong global footprint. So very, very excited about that. Our customers will also be delighted to learn that we are releasing web browser compatibility with Google Chrome, and that will also enable them to use Mac computers in their clubs. So that's going to be huge. 
And last but far from least, we are making tremendous progress with our new software platform where we have intense focus on hyper-personalized user experience and uh, aesthetic design and flow. Um, and we will begin the migration of some of our low complexity customers later in the year. So lots of very exciting activity, but you know, so much gratitude to our customers for partnering with us as we really look to innovate the, the future of the fitness industry. Kelly, they are three pieces of phenomenal news. And I just wanted to touch on that middle one because I'm imagining there's a lot of people out there that will be thinking, wow, that is seriously cool. Web browser compatibility. I imagine that is something that a lot of people are going to absolutely love within their business. Have you had good feedback so far? Well, you're the first oh. learning of this of this <laughs> release. It's a, it's a big initiative for us in 2019. So there you have it. Well, we are very honored to be the first to hear about it. So for those people that are listening right now that want to know more about any of those updates, or if they want to chat to one of the team from ABC Financial and find out how you can help them within their fitness business, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Oh, certainly. Far, by far and away, the best place to go is abcfinancial.com. And we're also uh, on every single social media platform. I would also invite you to find ABC and our leadership like myself on LinkedIn, where we contribute regularly with articles and videos and um, news of what's happening in the space today. Well, we will put all of those links in the show notes for today. So Kelly, thank you for coming along and chatting to me. Thank you again so much for all of your support. We are super excited for the intensive shows in 2019. And thank you to all of the team from ABC Financial. Uh, thank you. A big thank you to Kelly for joining me on the show and a reminder that if you'd like to speak to the team from ABC Financial or if you'd like to request a demo, then head over to abcfinancial.com. A reminder that in addition to the podcast, you can of course download an ebook of today's intensive episode. So head over to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com, click on the tab at the top of the page that is called intensive, then scroll down and press the button that says access the ebook of this interview or download the ebook of this interview. It is super, super easy. Thank you all so much for joining me for this special edition of the ABC Financial Intensive Shows. Don't forget, we now have a huge library of intensive courses that are available for you. That includes sales, financial management, how to start your own YouTube channel, video essentials, how to start your online personal training business, onboarding a new employee, and building a retention plan. You can find all of those at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. I would love to hear what you thought of our latest show. Please feel free to email me at any time at chantal at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you once again for joining me today. And until next time, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others.